Once the research is done, you want to apply yourself. Outline your knowledge, your skills, um, your abilities that can help you qualify for this job. Make sure you're looking for what the employer wants, seeking those skills. That way you can e explain it to them. Determine if that position makes you happy and get ready to submit your resume and application. At this point, a human resources representative is going to reach out to you. They're going to be interested in your application. They're going to want to set up the time, date, location of your interview. At this point, you can ask about the dress code if you don't know. <coughs> and you can also ask about the procedure of the interview questions, brain teasers, or standard leadership questions. Invest time in learning that process. You can make sure to anticipate questions and how to answer them. That way you don't look like a deer in headlights when they're asking you things. Make sure, um, I'm sorry, if you don't seem prepared, it's going to be unappealing to your employer. Mm -hmm. Tips to ensure comfort is practicing with your friends. Do mock interviews. The more you're in front of people answering these questions, the more comfortable you feel. If you have trouble, think of a to-go-to -to phrase to help the dead air, and that way you can collect your thoughts. Some more practice is reflecting on your personal story. The more you know yourself, the more ready you're going to have for examples to apply to any questions needed. You can try saying these things in front of a mirror. That way, you're seeing how you're saying these. You're watching your body. You're watching anything you're doing. That way, you can focus on any distractive movements. With that, you can practice on it. The last thing you want is the employer to be thinking about, oh, she was playing with her hair the entire time you're explaining your skills. You can also critique yourself, make sure that you're keeping eye, top, eh, eye contact with your employer, I'm sorry, because um, loss of eye contact can mean you're lying, and that's never good. <coughs> now that you have an idea of what you're going to say to the employer, you should start planning on what you want to look You want to present yourself in a professional manner, you want to be formal, neat, and clean, so dress and press, that's always key, we've known that since the NJS, third grade. Um, you're selling yourself to this company, so make it believable. If you're nervous, stay modern. Try avoiding that ugly go-to interview outfit. This is for girls especially. Avoid those bizarre colors, flashy makeup, dangle earrings, too many rings. It's flashy, it's distracting, and they do notice. Try to keep what's close to shoes, and like I said, stay classy, stay modern, and play it safe. Do some pampering for sure. The better you look, the better you feel. Now, if you need, get a facial, cut your hair, make sure you shave. Confidence is key to landing the job, and it will show. Now, don't forget the small things like shining your shoes, checking for loose hems, and make sure your hands are done for girls they do notice. At this point, you have what you want to say and what you want to look. Plan on what you're bringing to the day of the interview. Be prepared and show your employer that you're ready to take on this job and you're reliable. You can bring extra resumes, notepads, and pencils to take notes. Make sure you have a list of references ready to go in case they request it. If you feel better, you can prep yourself with a to-go-to interview kit in your purse or in your briefcase. These can include the essentials I said, references, resumes, and also things you need in unexpected situations. So an umbrella, a stain kit, or even breath mints. If you're bringing a bag, make sure to clean it out. The last thing you want is to be rummaging through something, looking for that resume, and they see trash, or receipts, or phone chargers. It looks super unorganized, and that's not someone someone's going to want to hire. You want to be reliable, you want to be organized, so make sure that is staying clean and neat and readily accessible. The night of, get good night's sleep. It sounds tedious and annoying, something your mom's going to tell you to do, but sleep deprivation can lead to huge time failure. So make sure you're getting that good night's sleep, DVR your favorite TV show, the game, you can check the stats in the morning. I promise you it'll help wonders. The morning of, set and reset the alarm for heavy sleepers like myself. I need six. You need to make sure you're giving yourself time, take a shower, and even plan for travel time. You never know about traffic. Lateness is never an excuse. And as we typically say for any sports team, if you're on time, you're already late. Now that you're arriving, make sure you know where you're going, who to ask for, and who you're meeting with. I know my first interview, um, my company was in a big transition, so they were moving around. And I ended up being at a warehouse, didn't have any numbers to call, didn't know who I was interviewing with, and there was no receptionist to help me. So what did I do? I had to hope they knew I was there. 
Now, the waiting room behavior is huge. Nonverbal actions speak wonders. Sometimes waiting room um, actions are reported to your employer just to see who you are when they're not watching. And this can include the way you're sitting, <coughs> maintain good posture, and try saying off the phone. <coughs> Last, you want to remember that the first impression is everything. When the employer comes out to greet you, stand up, warm them with a greet, um, I'm sorry, greet them with a warm smile, shake their hand firmly, and maintain eye contact. And good luck with your interview. I'll hand it over to Charlie, and he's going to discuss the types of interviews we're having. All right, thank you very much, Erica. All right, everyone, my name is Charlie. I'll be speaking to you about the different types of interviews that you may encounter uh, within the real world. During my time, I'm going to cover the panel interview, the mealtime interview, the audition interview, and lastly, the meandering interview. To begin, panel interview is usually conducted by about two to five people. On some occasions, more may be <coughs> present. Conductors can range from supervisors, HR managers, possibly even employees in the same position that you're applying for. This type of interview is mainly seen for higher, uh, higher types of positions, such as senior executives and maybe even government officials. Although these types of interviews may come off as intimidating, that's not the purpose of them. The employer wants to gauge your interaction with all that are present, how you can build rapport, and most importantly, react to the stress of many questions being asked. <laughs> As you can see here, th thinks he's being rated. So, a great example of a panel interview can come from Northwestern University of Feinberg <coughs> School of Medicine. The process consists of a blind interview. The interviews do not, the interviewers do not uh, review the applicants prior. The conductors consist of two staff members and a fourth year medical student. <coughs> During the interview, the main points they want to take away from the candidates are maturity, professionalism, empathy, oral expression, knowledge, critical thinking, attention to others, and problem solving. Also, this specific interview is done as a group. They want to evaluate how the candidates react with each other. Now on to the mealtime interview. This type of interview can be conducted at any time during the day, whether it be breakfast, lunch, or dinner. The location can vary from the uh, conference room to a restaurant. An interview over a meal may seem relaxed and a, in a relaxed and social environment, but always stay alert. This is still an interview. The interviewer is watching you carefully. They want to see how you act in a social setting. This type of interview is usually uh, used for positions that require employees to build and maintain relationships with other companies on a personal level, which is, which is why every detail matters, from how you speak to your host to how you interact with any other person you see around you. So, some tips for the lunch interview. Some great ways to succeed during this type of interview are make sure you're ordering food that's relatively close to what your interviewer <coughs> is ordering. Stay away from messy sauces. Uh, if the interviewer is talking business, take advantage of that. If they're not, do not bring up business way too early. Now I'm going on to the auditions. Another type of interview that may arise <coughs> is the audition. The audition is for jobs that require a certain level of expertise such as technical instructor, a trainer, a programmer. This audition is used to, to gauge the candidate on their skill set regarding the position. Before making a final decision, employers want to see those with a special talent in action. Therefore, asking you to present a brief exercise where they may even give you a small uh, simulation that you have to solve. Uh, for example, an instructor may be asked to create a lesson and present it to the classroom. Uh, the students will, will be played by the interviewers. Auditions are not only limited to the programmers and instructors, they also branch off into the music and arts industry. Uh, for example, the Berkeley College of Music requires a 15 minute long piece to be prepared and presented as part of their application process for their students, um, <coughs> along with a face-to-face -face interview to ensure that they select their students wisely. Audition tips. An audition interview can be very stressful with people who don't believe they have the skills or a competitive advantage for uh, to competitive edge against others. But to maximize chances, it is always great to understand the instructions you are given. Take ownership of the work you are providing and ensure you are you are communicating so that you do things right the first time. Lastly, we have the meandering style of interview. This type of interview has the potential to serve <coughs> you for the best, and if you know how to gear it towards your way, 
This tactic is mainly used for employers who don't necessarily have the proper training to conduct a structured interview. The meandering, meandering style interview, as I mentioned earlier, can benefit you if you utilize the situation correctly. The reason being is because this style of interviewing utilizes questions such as, tell me about yourself, along with several open-ended questions. Um, questions such as these allow you to take control of the interview. Although there is a benefit to this style of interviewing, there is also a downfall. <coughs> if you are not properly prepared, you may find yourself lost and not answering the questions as you wish. Since the questions are so vague, vague and sometimes irrelevant, you may not think of certain instances throughout your previous careers that will wow your interviewer. The interview itself can also become boring. Uh, maybe it's going to fall silent or you're going to run out of things to talk about, you don't have a great topic to speak about. Uh, it can be very frustrating. So, you might be saying, Charlie, how do I avoid this if this were to happen to me? Well, the main thing is to always come prepared. Make sure you have your skills, qualities, and experiences ready. You cannot rely on the interviewer to help you remember any of these things. These are from your life, and he's not going to know them. Also, another major factor is to stay in your role. Do not disrespect the interviewer by dominating the conversation with your own questions. Adjust to them, because you can risk missing information about the company that you were not aware of, or about the position that you were not aware of, and you might even get the interviewer a little mad because you're taking over the conversation. So, to wrap up my section, these are just a, a few different types of interviews you may encounter within the real world. In my section, I covered interview types that aren't too common, but now I'm going to hand it off to my partner, Justin, where he will cover the interview types that may be more relatable to us right now in college. Thank you, Charlie. All right, guys, my name is Justin. Um, I'm a business major here at Rhone University. Um, I'm going to follow up on uh, Charlie's presentation about job interviews and the process towards job interviews. <clears throat> All right, so uh, what is an interview? All right, uh, the interview is a conversation directed to a definite purpose other than satisfaction in the conversation of itself. Okay, the interview starts when you approach on property of the, of the company. All right, so they look at when you walk to the door, do you hold the door for the person who works for the company? All right, same thing with when you are uh, watching or, I'm sorry, waiting for the interview to start uh, with the secretary. Make sure you're friendly before the secretary. One-on-one -on -one interview. Okay, this is the most common first interview that most people have. <laughs> Okay, this is to see how you will fill in within the company. Okay, always market yourself. Okay, make sure you stay on topic of what they are asking you um, during a one-on-one interview. Next is going to be the phone interview. Okay, this is normally quick. Okay, I've never personally had a phone interview. Okay, this is make sure you guys are in the same location. I'm, I'm sorry, a safe location. Do not be driving all right, on Bluetooth and talking to someone. All right, always answer your phone professionally. Next is a virtual interview. Okay, this I also never uh, experienced either. Um, this is within Skype or uh, sometimes with an iPad. Okay, this is when um, a company is either across seas or across country and it saves uh, expenses for the company and also yourself. Okay, so uh, make sure your environment is neat and clean. All right, make sure if you do have kids or pets that they are uh, out of the area. Next is going to be the case or testing uh, interview. Okay, this is to uh, make, sure uh, make sure you understand when they give you a test interview that you understand the question. Okay, if you do not understand it, uh, ask them. Um, when you do understand it, always, always pick the best approach, all right? Uh, just jot down like a list of approaches and choose your best one. Okay, the next is a stress interview. Okay, uh, this is to uh, test and see when they ask you uncomfortable questions to see how you react towards the question. Okay, do not take this personally. Uh, it's just uh, when you do answer it, uh, answer it professionally. For the new and you, um, I was interviewing for uh, J.C. Penney's in high school. Um, I was interviewing for a receiving job, and I did not wear a tie to the interview. And I was kind of shocked when he asked me, "Why are you wearing a tie?" And I was just like, "I'm applying for taking boxes off the truck." And he's like, "You should always wear a shirt to inter uh, shirt and tie to interview." So there's no such thing as dressing up to an interview. Always dress up. Okay, the next is the behavioral interview, also known as the STAR uh, method. Okay, 
So just, uh, you're going to have a situation, okay? Just make sure uh, this reduces the bias, okay? So when they ask you a question, 